Hello there, and welcome to episode 11 of my tutorial series for Against the Storm. In this one, we're going to go and start exploring other biomes, except from the Royal Woodlands. So from this point on, we're going to go over the new prestige layers, but they're going to be only the side topic. We're going to go mainly over those biomes. The changes of the new prestige levels aren't that massive and we're going to focus into higher prestige levels and their problems in future parts of the series so this next part of the series will be all about biome exploration and i'm going to start with the coral forest today but before we get there a few quick things we can buy still upgrades and i want to stress out how important these uh, next upgrades are so we're going to buy ourselves here a additional blueprint choice. This is massive. This is one of the most valuable and powerful upgrades to take early game. And here, well, we have to buy that bullet, but this one is the next one, an additional cornerstone choice. The earlier you can get these, the, the, the more reliable your runs will grow, because one extra choice per roll is so strong that if you struggle getting your foot into the door in prestige in general, these two cornerstone or, or upgrades will will do a lot of a difference. All right, so with that being said, let's get on over into our new adventure. We're going to settle down in the Coral Forest. So what's the deal about the Coral Forest? It has a really, really wild mix of resources. It, I'm going to explore that when we're in the in the biome itself but basically you can get so many more materials there so if you check out the trees we get wood plant fiber meat we get meat from those trees we get crystallized too yeah that's finished ingots we get stone out of trees again and incense that's a finished luxury product the trees in this area are amazing they drop crazy things also we have a chance of double yield the more hostility the forest has. So here we have a bit of a uh, invitation to play on risk. All in all, the downside of this area, the hidden downside, which isn't really good uh, explained here, is food is a lot harder to come by and wood is pretty scarce too. Because other biomes, when we get on back here to the Royal Woodlands, to give you a quick comparison, we have a higher density of wood there. And in the coral forest, my, ex my, my experiences were either a shortage of wood or some sort of sh uh, shortage in, in food. But we're going to go on with this in the game. Prestige level 2 will make Blight Rot a tad bit stronger, but seriously, it is... There's not just, just not much of a difference there. So, embarkation bonus. I'm personally a big fan of bringing either a lot of food or a mixture of wood and food. We're going to bring wood and food in this regard. Building materials are pretty pretty awesome too. This would be a big supply of bricks early on, but since this is a beginner series after all, I'm trying to go for the more reliable way. Fuel and food are really easy to use, whereas with bricks or brick material, you really gotta know what you're planning towards too. All right, so all forest mysteries. Always check them out before you start. You know the deal. So we get a, <laughs> we get reputation whenever we finish glade events during Drizzle. Yay! I hate that a bit, but quite powerful if you can pull it off. So we get a reduction of sacrifices in the ancient hearth. Not that much of a big deal. We have a slower global food production, scaling with hostility, so food production during the storm will rather suck. Oh, vessel tax. Ugh, yuck. So uh, we, we will have to pay 5 amber each storm, multiplied by the amount of years. So year 1, 5 amber. Year 2, 10. Year 3, you get the idea. It's pretty sucky, but we have to suck it up. So this is one of the first uh, runs where where money generation will be really important. When you draw that uh, thing, you, you need to generate amber, or you just re-roll your game if you don't like it. But we're going to play through this. So, and we get a extra penalty to resolve if our people don't have access to complex food and housing. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty difficult mixture, but we're going to pick it up. All right, so first off, 
check out this wild biome. So we got all manner of different trees here. So we got the plant le plate leaf trees. These are plant fiber and wood. We have these uh, coral thingies. Those are crimson reach trees, stone and incense. You have those uh, completely brown and leafless things. That's mussel sprout trees, wood and uh, meat and metal. Pretty powerful. And I think this type, no, I think these were all the types that we have, yeah. So in general, this 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 biome is a bit of a uh, bit of a crazy one. So I have never had a chance to really plan ahead. But what's really great about it, we're going to set up our basic uh, our basics yet again. So woodcutters and the like. Um, what's really great about this biome is that you get free access to metal air, and uh, I always felt like that was a Really, really big thing. Oh, I just noticed that I derped on the on the colonist selection. Whatever, it's not that much of a big deal. Usually I do check what kind of uh, care when we take, but this time I just winged it. No problem though, no problem. So we got to check out what we got there. So first thing first, we want to turn off coal as a uh, hearth fuel because I got enough wood to use it as a fuel. And this way we can probably use the coal for your for, for our first danger clade event. All right, so we got ourselves some woodcutters. Since we don't have access to beavers, we're going to stock that up with humans. And uh, let's see. All right, first things first. Let's configure our dudes. This has been changed yet again by the, by the latest update. So we're going to cut only marked trees, and we're going to avoid glades. There we go. So for for now. I think if we shift click it, it should apply to all the others. Yes, yes, good. So let's check out our environments. We have one danger plate over here. We have smaller undangerous ones there. We have again one danger glade there, another danger glade there. So we have plenty of expansion room. Those smaller glades, I want to avoid them if possible. So my plan would be to work towards here because that diagonal line here is so prefer is really far nice, far away from our hearth. And uh, my my basic idea, I'm holding down control here by the way to avoid glades. My basic idea is that I want to open up a danger glade as early as possible. That has room for a for an extra hearth because extra hearths are powerful and uh, here as you see we would be easily getting the position whereas well okay here sometimes you have those danger glades right next to your uh, your starting point okay we're, we're going to put up shelters here again the usual thing let's uh, put up four shelters because we got i oh, know we need only three we got eight people all right, and beyond that, let's check out what we have in our first draft. As you see there, we have now four items to choose from, and that's absolutely amazing. So I see the provisioner. Whenever I see a provisioner, I'm, I'm already tempted. I also see a cookhouse, but in general, basics first and then over the rest. I cannot really say what I want from these, so I'm going to skip out on that. Sometimes I see a blueprint and I'm like, yeah, I need that. And uh, sometimes I, I really have no clue. So we have here the usual setup. Housing is being uh, made or wood choppers are chopping wood. The interesting thing here is that we are allocating all manner of different things. So for example here, some plant fibers are happening really early on. And here, three cornerstones instead of two is also quite amazing. All right, what do we get there? Um, stone production? I'll take that. The crazy thing here is uh, that some of our trees have a stone yield, as you might remember. And these cornerstones, yeah, they, they apply to that too. So whenever we chop down a Crimson Reach tree now, there's a chance to get three stones instead of only one. And that's powerful. They haven't changed anything. We're going to check that out though. You can't see that. And as you see there, our, our woodcutters are now entering the Muscle Sprout tree territory. So there's uh, a chance of uh, other materials going and going to happen here too. I find that quite crazy about this biome. So let's check out what we got auto-wise. So we can pick up packs of crops versus harvester camp, stonecutter camp, and some bricks. So all in all, yeah, well, we don't have the harvester's camp there. Hmm. 
Ooh, here, well, that sounds pretty tempting, but I don't know if I'll have access to uh, to crops and the like. I mean, I don't have access to a farm, so hmm, that's a bit of a dangerous ex uh, decision. So I'm not going to do anything for now. We don't need to. Let's just wait for our buildings to be completed. Whenever I don't know what to choose, I'll just wait and do it regularly. What I'm going to do here when the houses are finished, we're going to set up our, our usual suspects. So four decorational items to make the hub upgrade happen. Because that's just very, very helpful. It's free resolve, and free resolve is very, very good early on. So there we go. Our first pieces of crystallized dew are being uh, delivered here. So let's speed this up a tad bit. First year is uh, first year drizzle is always the same procedure for me. I leave one worker building up the rest of these, and uh, wood choppers are chopping wood because that's just what I need early on. And the interesting part here is that our woodcutters are, as a matter of fact, collecting many, many, well, unusual items. So here we're going to move our first woodcutter a bit over there. So what do we have here? We have a stone deposit, we have worm tongue nests, and a new change here is we have now a, a small camp for everything. So there's now a small foragers camp, a small trappers camp. Small deposits can now be always harvested no matter the uh, draft, and that's a pretty nice change. So we don't have to have now certain people there. And I do notice one thing. Look at our, look at that, th those lizards and th those humans. Their resolve is so high. So here the reputation threshold is 30. If we'd be favoring them, that would change nothing. But their reputation threshold is 15. So let's favor them and uh, gain extra reputation for free. You know, happy lizards. Happy lizards. Okay, as soon as these things are finished building, we're going to set up our, the rest of our basic thing. And I haven't found anything better so far in the first year. I mean, I'm really open to ideas in the comment section that show me other approaches to the whole topic. But for starters, I always find that a super solid and easy to pull off uh, setup that I have here. And it served me well all the way up until Prestige 12 and 13. That was the first part where I felt like maybe I should, I, I should put up some variants from that uh, layout. But I'm really open to hear opinions from experienced players there too. So here we go. We have now the ancient hearth upgraded. You know that already from me. That's a pretty solid base strat. We are actually already allocating some reputation. It ain't much because we don't have uh, too many lizards. So the more people you have in one faction, the higher the impact will be. And vice versa. So here we can move that woodcutter over there. As you notice, I'm I'm mostly oriented now towards enlargening my my starting glade and opening up a proximity to that thing here. We're really close to the storm season, so that's another another thing to take care of. But considering the extremely nice resource values of our people here, I don't see any bigger issues. Really not. Okay, we got now the basics down. All the basic buildings are there. We can now start focusing things a bit. So I wanted to check on out the packs of props before I... how they are made before I make a decision. Of course, I personally already know how they are made, but I wanted to showcase here that we have mushrooms, roots, vegetables, and grain. So only vegetables and grain are actually made on a farm. The other items, let's see if we can find roots and mushrooms somewhere else. So first of all, we have a vegetable deposit here, and uh, over here we can, well, insects don't qualify. So all in all, we can easily fulfill that objective, so I'll take that. This is especially great because we have that amber request, and uh, in the first year, we don't have to worry about the vassal tax yet, because we're not at hostility 3. This thing will only trigger as soon as we are on hostility 3. So it's good to have some orders that bring us amber. So let's pick up the next, let's see. Four glades, I'm not a big fan of that. Let's say this one is way better. Four glade openings, since I prefer danger glades always over the small ones, I don't like to pick up these. Although the perk here, the scouts pack is really great. 
but to, to you know more stone and free tools i like that especially since we are already pretty deep in the in the stone generation here we have stone deposits there and our, our woodcutters are also capable of producing stone so i really like that one now let's check out the third order one ancient tablet for some foodstuffs nah oh yeah selling goods and uh, giving amber for a couple of tools so this is a little bit of a difficult one this i would actually recommend to people who are quite new ish to the game because the rewards here are extremely stabilizing 60 food are a lot and here get only the tools and the wildfire essence is not really yeah you know we're, we're going to take that this is a beginner series after all and this uh, is the safer choice Okay, so we have our orders down now, so maybe this helps us out a little bit easier to find out what we want there. So, I'd say a great choice to begin with is going to be the cookhouse. The skewers are easily made out of materials that we have available. We have vegetables, we have insects, and chances are that we're going to stick with that. And the skewers alone are already worth it. Remember, complex food is in itself extremely valuable and always the most important thing after basic materials and biscuits well i think we're going to get there we still need a little bit more of that but uh we're taking the provisioner here uh the the cookhouse i'm sorry provisioner was a close second because he can make the flour we need for the cookhouse but one thing at a time so here it's a bit of, it's a bit of harder one here again we can't have a small farm which is great we can have a plantation i don't need that this much but I think the small farm and the forager's camp are, are going to be in a very, very close competition here. I'm going to make that decision, though, only after the next season, or actually when we've opened that uh, Danger Glade. That's uh, the, the big thing that I'm going to wait on for here. Okay, we have already made 0.17 points of reputation in the first year. Hooray! Well, that doesn't sound much, but uh, every point of reputation you gain, the earlier, the better. So, let's see. We're going to go for and, and turn off that lighter treatment. And remember that we have that little uh, bonus perk here. So, whenever we manage to resolve a Glade event in the right season, we get bonus reputation. So, let's try to achieve that. We're configuring this dude to fell only mock trees. Hold down left shift to make a really small narrow gap and here we go so during storm season we do have nothing to do right now that's a pretty good one i i highly doubt the, that the hostility will be high enough to get us any problems after opening this remember every opened glade raises hostility all right what do we have here a living matter a large encampment and a kiln holy moly that, that's actually good kiln is pretty cool at a kiln we can make coal for free and we can make jerky the production of the jerky is pretty inefficient but at the end of the day to be able to produce the items is often really really already a big thing so let's uh hold down b and see what we got there so we got a large reed field small insect deposits and large stone deposits luckily the stone cutters camp is something we don't need to buy extra we have two coal deposits there so as tempting as this thing might look like we can we can forage coal here via a mine and most of the items we see here aren't well we can make bricks but at a low efficiency no i actually want to just deconstruct that thing I want to salvage this, take the coal, take the bricks, and be a happy man with that. But we have to take care of the living matter first. Living matter, ha, look at that, ancient tablet, wonderful. So ancient, the, the, the living matter is only eating your food, and that's all it does. Really, it's just like that. It does nothing nothing more than that. When when you do that uh, event, you'll, you'll have a constant drain on your food stockpiles. And that's literally all this event does. The good side about it is it does not require any tools. It does just, re it only requires manpower. So uh, we're going to unemploy one of our woodcutters. And those two people here, they're going to work on the 
living matter now. And as you see here, it's uh, 3 minutes 30 to do that. So we send the people in. The drizzle will be in 122. So there's a high chance of us now getting that done during the right season. Huzzah! Wait, that, that's great. This is going to be a extra point. And like I said, the, these things, it really pays off to try and fulfill them. So, next step, I want to unemploy even another woodcutter here, because we have tremendous amounts of wood, and I'd actually prefer to dis dislodge the kiln at the same time. We will pay for bricks to gain 10 bricks. I like that deal. So, all in all, stuff's looking pretty good here. We're going to put up a small hearth on this uh, on this glade as soon as we have the people for that. We can even get extra villagers here at the large encampment, so this is a really nice start. We can really, really uh, make a lot of good things happen here, and uh, I feel like I already uh, have won this hot way. <laughs> so the forages camp will the thing with these bigger uh, with these big deposits is we cannot we cannot uh, make anything happen without the proper camp. So uh, let's check it out. How did I get the Harvester's Camp blueprint already? Hmm. I don't know. I somehow don't know why I have this, but um, I'm happy that I have this. So we're definitely going to pick up a camp on there. But for, for now, we cannot do much. We're totally out of working hands, and we got to wait for the next season. But that's a great start. So uh, we pick up our newcomers here. We can have Harpies this time, all right? So I'm picking up the hoppies with the, uh, well, we're picking up the delivery with the extra harpies. Why not? Okay, so first things first, housing. We do require an extra unit of housing. Let's make that happen right away. And let's see what kind of new cornerstone we can have. So Rebellious Spirit, I love that one. Resolve for Impatience is great. The later you get to... The, the higher difficulty level, the more powerful the this trait will become. We gain artifacts whenever we complete two danger and forbidden glade events. This is really awesome if your account is new and young. And for every ten completed trade routes, we will become we will get stronger housing. But no, we're we're going to take the extraction tools because the extra artifacts are great. The rebellious spirit would be a great choice if you'd be not too sure whether or not you'd make it in this run. So let's see. Um, I got three uh, or three and more minutes of the drizzle left, so the the living matter will be will be dealt with during that season. Awesome. That means we get the full reward. Nice. But check out my, my food uh, clock here. It's really diminishing. But that's no wonder. In the current situation, we have no resource gathering on food whatsoever. I was solely relying on the meat income <laughs> of our woodcutters. That's crazy, but it works, you know. And uh, we're, we're going to have a jolly good time now because we're starting to collect stuff now. So first off, I want a forager's camp and a trapper's camp. I want to make sure that the food collection happens ASAP. The next thing we require is, as usual, somebody to refine materials at the crude workstation. We're going to employ one harpy here and set up production limits on everything. Make sure that you have enabled something on the fabric that's actually present. Same goes for the bricks. Usually you have no stones auto-enabled. That's a bad thing. Gotta change that. All right. Right now we cannot make that much more happen because a lot of our workers are bound on the events. So we have to wait on that a bit. So the small forages camp has a specialization bonus on farming. That means humans. Humans do that job. If, if, if these specialization bonuses are available, they are usually totally worth it. Because here we get a chance to have double yield. And, uh, you know, double yield is just amazing. Oops, I didn't need to press that. So... Right now, let's wait until this is uh, has been set, uh, dealt with. And here, yet again, I see that the uh, reputation threshold here is on a uh, eligible point, so we can again just uh, favor our lizards a bit to get to crank out some more happiness. 
I like that. It's free happiness. So, orders. What can we do there? So, eight packs of provision would yield a increase of lizard clan of lizard resolve versus light post and purging fire for nah, I don't know what I want to want to take here. So, provisions are a little bit difficult to produce in certain uh, situations because you'll require foodstuffs to make that happen. But uh, we're gonna get there. And aiding the flock, crop packs, and building materials. Hell yeah, I want that. So we get bonus resolve on the harpies and the lizards. These can be win conditions, you know? Alright, but before we can talk about win conditions, we gotta talk about the fact that the living matter ate all my stockpiles. So we are, as a matter of fact, completely broke when it comes down to food. When you're in that kind of situation, gotta be aware of one thing the food does not the, the lack of food does not kill your people or anything they just grow unhappy whenever they want to eat and they don't have any food they'll stack up a tad bit of unhappiness due to that until the resolve is breaking as you see here or 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 game here is uh, also going down but good news we just have to wait until the the ancient tablet comes on in and then we can give away that relic. It's just a question of time. One day soon, one of our people will get that thing there. All right, there we go. So this was just the right decision to make that happen because now we have exactly the food stockpiles we, we require to survive longer. Perfect. What do you want more from life? So next thing on my list, I want to uh, cleave my way through over to this one because that's easily accessible alternatively we could go one over to this one maybe maybe i do this actually now that i look more closely at it it's better like that we are still tremendously low on workforce but that's mostly happening until this uh incident of living matter is over is over you know it does take a while for your dudes to get rid of that uh of these situations so we're uh, designating more chopping area there. There we go. If we'd had a warehouse here, things would have gone much faster. But we we don't have one, so we have to accept the fact that this is a current life. But luckily, we got the forages camp working up for us here. So things are actually way better than they look like. We just have to wait until these events are resolved. It would have been a really solid choice to have went for the large encampment first instead of the kiln. Now that I think more closely about it, I think that would have been the better choice. But whatever. Hindsight is twenty twenty. So we can here go for the uh, strat here again to get, make our lizards happy. And we've already gained 0.25 points of reputation there. One point came from the, from the order. Another half point came from the drizzle effect there, but that, the rest of that, just uh, just all the lizards, you know? It's all been the lizards. Alright. And finally, our workers are freed up here. That's been what I've been waiting for. Here, a third worker will be free soon, and now we can... We're going to safely wait for that trapper's camp, and I want to man these as quick as possible, because we really need to secure our resources here we have an, an again a worthwhile specialization bonus so lizards are good at meat production so we're going to unassign that lizard there and assign it over there there we go all right we are pretty close to the next storm season and here that kiln will be dismantled any moment soon and we we'll have another free worker there but uh well We'll be getting there. It's a slow start, year two. We're going to get, so we're going to get somewhere. But the good news so far is we already have claimed almost two reputation points, and there's a good chance of us uh, continuing like that. In case you were wondering, I haven't built the trading posts on purpose so far because I didn't feel like there was any chance or necessity for me. Since we require the money later down the road, I want to bring the first trader on a very very good moment for us. So I'm starting I'm stopping the lighter treatment here right away because harpies are kind of like a, a bit of a uh, needy bunch. 
So, storm season setting on in. During that, we have to take care of our heart piece a little bit more thoroughly. But luckily, we are in that kind of situation again. Nothing needs to be done in particular. Wonderful. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut here only marked trees. And uh, you already might have guessed we're going to open up another glade during the storm. I do this here mostly because I have this wacky bonus on unsolved glade events during the storm season because I really feel like that, that's the best way to do it. If you have that bonus and you're not on the very high prestige levels where solving Glade events takes darn long, just a teaser here. During this stage of the game, it's a pretty solid choice to go like that. Later, it can be quite difficult to fulfill those uh, events. And you'd even have to open them during clearance to make sure that they're getting resolved during Grizzle, but more about that when we get there. So, our next thing we have here is an open vault, and uh, yeah, that's actually quite a uh, quite a happy one. So, here you get a penalty to resolve for on, on only on woodcutters and gatherers. And uh, the thing here is the impatience of the crown grows faster <coughs> while you're working on that one. So, that's pretty annoying, but all in all, that also means that you can pretty much control the, the resolve loss pretty decently. We have to start working on that immediately. And reward-wise, well, I'm going to take that one, even though the metals and the ancient tablets are quite appealing. So, we don't have any further use for them. We could sell the tablets too, but since we have trees that yield metal, I don't want the metal reward that badly. So, we're sending that back to the Citadel. And uh, we're going to set that up. And as you see here, crazy, crazy stuff is happening. That's mostly because we have now lizards working here. And as you see there, the uh, resolve problems go away the moment I unemploy the people from their uh, from their jobs. This means we have now a ton of idle hands. And I'm going to go over how to utilize that situation best in the next episode. Because you can make a lot of that situate a lot out of that situation. And we're going to talk about how that works next time. So I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. Let's see if we can win this next time. Uh, well, I think we're going to require three episodes as usual. This is uh, the intro of the Coral Forest, and I hope you liked it. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what kind of biomes you really want to see badly next. And feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video. Leave a subscription if you haven't done so already and check out the description box there is a link to the entire playlist of this one and you also find support links for this channel and i'd be really delighted if you'd give them a look as a free content creator i can use all the help that i can get and a big big thanks to all the supporters out there i truly appreciate see you guys next time bye bye